Hi there, Tim Irwin here from Cigar City Hot Rods and more. Uh, starting with our tips and tricks. This is the Henry J. Gasser I talked to you about previously. I'm having Ron start to put the frame rails in the rear end and everything in this car. And I want to show you where we're at, how we got there, and why we're there. Here's the car. As you saw before, it had extensive sheet metal repair just so we could get to this point. Rockers, A-pillars, quarter panel mounting, all kinds of stuff done. We built a makeshift jig, because we've got another car on the other jig, out of 2x2 two two tubing. If you're doing this at home, I've built them on 2x4, two 2x6 two jigs with plywood on top of it. You just need a level surface to work from. As you can see in this jig, we put temporary legs on it, level the, fr the whole frame jig, and put temporary legs on it just to hold it in place. They also sprayed a little primer on the floor so we know if we bumped it, we could get it right back where it was. The body has already been mounted on the jig in relationship to the centerline string that you can see here in the video. We started at the front of the jig and went to the back, and that's our reference line in regards to starting this build. Center line of the car. Now when you're doing this, you have to have a perpendicular line to work from too. And what we did in this instance is we used a simple formula that's called the 6-8-10 formula. You measure six foot out to the end of this plate, measure eight foot forwards to a mark we have on the jig, right here and then when you hook on this and I'm telling you this because I usually do all this stuff by myself you hook on that there and you measure to this mark and it's 10 foot that means it's square that means that that line is perpendicular to the center line now what we'll do is we'll make permanent marks on the jig and we will mount laser fixtures because everything we do on this car will measure with the laser that way if your jig's not perfectly flat plumb whatever you've got a uh, place to mark measure from and what we did here temporarily we've got a laser set up here on the floor on the stand that allow, allowed us to measure in the four corners and get this thing setting level. That's why we welded the legs on where they're at because we know the whole thing is level on all four corners. We've got a good start. Okay, the next thing you need to do, tip number two, is go to a junkyard and find you some old axles. I work at Mosier Engineering so axles are pretty easy for me to find but you can use anything. As you can see right here in my pile I got seven diff different axles that I use to measure wheel to wheel dimension. And as you can see right here, all I do is bolt those little axle stubs to the wheels and slip them in a piece of pipe so that I can see how that wheel's going to look underneath the car when I'm done. With the Henry J. The way the body's designed, the tire is sort of flush on the front, but it sticks out on the back. And if you were going for this look, gas or look with the bulge sticking out, if you'd have measured from here to the bulge, the tire would have been way in in the front and it would have looked dumb. And when you're talking to one of the manufacturers about getting a rear end built for your car, the wheel to wheel dimension is super important. If you give them that and tell them what you're doing for brakes, they can build everything for you and you won't have to do this part of it twice. The rear end housing is going to be the most important part of the car. If the rear end's not straight in the car, square in the car, the car's never going to go straight. What we do is we built this fixture right here, get a little better view of it, the clamps on top of that frame jig holds the rear end at the proper height with the aid of the fixture that holds in the housing end and then we've got our centerline fixture on here that's lined up with the centerline 
on the rear end jig. We got that both sides, so this is set the correct height, which I typically do is half of the tire diameter minus a half inch for compressed tire. So with this here, we got a 29 and a half inch tire. We're just setting it 14 and a half inches off the jig, so to the center line of the housing that is. Then, once you get all that stuff ready to go, we know we've got the wheels in the wheel opening where we want them with this tube. We measured from our fixture, our line here in the fixture, to the center line of that tube, and that gave us an axle center line dimension. In turn, tells us where the housing has to go in the fixture. We'll get that done, and I'll show you a picture of that.